Hi, it's Ginny. Uh, you're watching 175 BPM TV, and we met uh, MC Linguistic. Hello. 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 And Mighty DJ Friction, which is unfortunately one of my favorites. <laughs> Oh, thanks. I, I paid you to say that earlier, so I appreciate you doing that. That's good. No, he didn't. <laughs> no, he didn't. We just met after his set. Um, according to, the, to your set, um, it's not the first time of yours in Poland. Um, how do you like the crowd? I love the crowd in Poland. To be honest, Polish crowd has always been great. Very receptive crowd and very kind of aware of the different styles of drum and bass and They really enjoy every, all the different types of music that is involved with drum and bass music. So it's always been a great crowd for us to come to and play and somewhere we've really enjoyed coming to. And yeah, just big love for the Polish crowd. Thank you very much. What do you think from the MC point of view? Uh, yeah, it was a wicked crowd. Like we got to play 90 minutes, kind of got to play a kind of a variety of different kind of tunes. And yeah, they were, yeah, as you say, really receptive, clearly know their music. So yeah, it's, it's easy, really. It's, it's a pleasure. Thank you very much. Um, I have to ask for something. You're from uh, Brighton. I'm from Brighton, yeah. And you are from? I'm from London. Okay, how did you guys catch up together? Um, I can't remember, actually. I think... <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> that's, that's a great answer. Yeah. I had, um, I had a manager at the time and he was like, oh, yeah, like, you need to have, like, a regular MC and I've got this guy. He's a little bit crazy, but I think he could be a good MC. So, excuse me. He used to play a lot with SPMC. I do yeah, remember yeah. that. Like, uh, I, I obviously play with SP loads um, and then we kind of, like, started doing different projects and stuff and... My manager was like, yeah, this guy, he's a bit crazy, but he'll be a good MC for you. And I met him and he is crazy. He is. Yes, yeah, he is. Yes, you are. Yeah, I'm not. I'm a <laughs> he's nuts. He's nuts. <laughs> you don't know what he's going to do at any time. It could, you know, you don't know what's going to happen. But um, it's the same with your mixing. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's why he suits, he suits my mixing. Yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, Do you think it's exactly the same? Yeah, same thing. He's an absolute nutcase, uh, but it, it works somehow. <laughs> Okay, um, you make some, some tunes as well as, a, as an MC, not really drum and bass MC. Mm. What is your um, next, plan for, uh, next plan for a release or, or an album or maybe an EP? So, yeah, I do like a lot of hip-hop stuff um, exactly. as well. Um, I do some drum and bass tunes as well. Um, I'm just going to kind of keep, keep releasing music. I've got some hip-hop stuff coming out this year. I've also got uh, a drum and bass tune as well, which will be coming out hopefully... I don't know how much I can say about with it. With? Uh, who? Can I say it? Uh, so I've done a tune with uh, Polo and Bryson, who are signed to Shogun. So we worked nice. on a tune for a while. Um, so that'll be coming out sometime this year, which is, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that coming out, actually. I'm not going to say too much about it. I'm going to wait until it kind of drops. Um, but yeah, I'm excited about that coming out. Um, and yeah, just still keep doing some hip-hop stuff. And yeah, just keep releasing music. That's kind of the, the aim of the game, really. Thank you very much. Um, According to Shogun, what's coming next on Shogun or Shogun LTD? There is so much happening on Shogun, on Elevate, on Shogun Limited. Um, we've just had on Elevate um, a various artists EP with K9 and Kilohertz. Uh, Flowed us on there. Um, lots of big tunes. Uh, and Shogun, we have Technomatic album. Um, we just had the Poland Bryson album quite recently. Um, we've got 15 years of Shogun album coming out. Um, Galaxy album will be at some point. Um, a lot. Document <laughs> One a lot. album. Um, yeah, there's loads of stuff. I'm doing another EP on Elevate. Um, it's just so much happening at the moment. So you actually have to do a lot of work as a manager of, of, uh, of an so many labels. And you I do. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> <laughs> but but wait, wait for the rest of the question. Um, but you are still DJing. <laughs> you're still DJing um, a lot. So um, how do you manage to do that? You you just said. Can I can I say that you have a kid as well? Yeah. So you have a kid as well. You have a family. How do you manage to do that? Obviously. It's a tiring life, <laughs> and it's getting to the point where I just want someone to notice and say, God, you're tired, man. Take a holiday. Do you know what I mean? Because it's getting to that point. So, yeah, I, I do do that. And, uh, yeah, it's... it's uh, Exhausting. It is exhausting, yeah. Very yeah, look, I just can't take any... Especially, especially when, we, when we talk about it at half past four. 
yeah, in the morning. <laughs> no, it's good. I love, I love being part of the music. I love being a DJ. You know, I released my album in September and I couldn't believe the response to my album. Running the label is part of what I do and, you know, I just love doing it and just glad to be part of this movement and this music that we call drum and bass because I do love it and I live and breathe it and, yeah, I'm tired and I need a holiday. But, you know, it's, uh, we, we, you know, it's all good. I can't stop it. I can't stop yeah, it. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> we, you know, we've got, you know, but okay. it's cool. I love it. Okay. Um, I have, from my point of view, drum and bass went down after, like, 2005, 2006. Where did it go? Uh, like, like, I have to say that. Um, I used to live in UK at the time being, oh, okay, okay. from 2006 to 2010. Yeah. And unfortunately, from my point of view, um, John and Bates disappeared when the dubstep came up. Mm. Did you notice it? Or is it only me? I mean, John and Bates has always maintained, it's always been there. It's never disappeared. But what's happened is over the years, when you get other phases of music and crazes that come out, you'll get a little dip where it might not be as popular, but it's still there and the underground will still achieve and do what it's doing. But what is different about drum and bass compared to any other genre is that it stays there, whereas it's not a genre that comes in as really popular and then disappears, you know, but it is, you know, they, it will go through phases and... You know, what I think is very important to say is right now it's an amazing phase and a great time for the music and <laughs> very, very happy to, you know, to see it doing so well at the moment. I think the music is, is showing all the styles and is and very strong right now. Off right now. Yeah, really, amazing. Really fast. Um, there's more and more MCs at the moment. Mm. Um, the, the whole MCs thing is coming back as well. Mm. The things like um, SAS, SAS, SAS. It, yeah, yeah. <laughs> once, <laughs> many, uh, okay, yeah. Yeah. and uh, Problem Central, they're yeah, yeah, kicking yeah. off right now. Mm -hmm. um, are you going to do something like that as well with uh, with a couple of MCs and DJs and stuff? Um, I think what them lot are doing is amazing. Uh, I've always been a big fan of X Man and Evil B. Harry Shot is wicked as well. Shab, obviously, legend. Skibber as well. Like they're all they're all amazing. Um, from what I'm doing now, it's not. I haven't got any plans to do anything right. like the kind of super group thing that they're doing. But like watching, watching, kind of see what and seeing what they're doing is, is amazing. It's that you know the it they're kind of they're taking MC into a next level where it's like exactly. they're they're worth tickets, mm -hmm. um, which from from an M MC's perspective is really inspiring to see. Um, I think f from an MC's perspective again I've said that about a million times but I'm I'm just going to focus on making tunes for now right. um, but who knows in the future I don't know if, if, the, if from, an from an MC's perspective yeah. Ed that is <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I'm just going to keep making tunes I mean if it if it made sense then might try and do something but at the moment it's just focus on doing sets with with friction and uh yeah just yeah keep doing what I'm doing do you think that MC is going to be more important than DJs uh, don't watch it. I think no I don't I, I don't know it's quite difficult I don't think that anyone's less or more important I think there's I think there's a good balance between both of them and there always has been and I think one needs the other I don't I don't like seeing a set without an MC so well I'm biased I suppose but um, yeah okay thank you um, I'm gonna ask you strange questions I want you to think about it um, I know many people f asking for best tunes, for the best party, but I'm going to ask you for the worst tune you've ever done, uh, if you have MC2, and the uh, worst party you've ever been to. I've, I don't want to know where, where that was, uh, because some of the promoters can be affected, but do you remember such a thing that you're not going to go there anymore? Worst party. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I I'm so awesome. No, I don't, I don't dislike any music that I've made, to be honest. I go back, I tell you what I will say, is that I go back to old tracks, yes. and I hear them, and I'm like, oh, the mix down's terrible, you know, like... Everyone says that. Yeah, and, you know, like, because I think as a producer, you're always kind of progressing and, you know, developing as a producer. So when you hear sometimes old stuff, you're like, why didn't I like EQ that snare better? Or, like, you know, that hi-hat's not got enough bite to it. Or, you know, and that's what I think. But, um, no, I don't dislike any music that I made. What about you? So, 
I'd say the same. There's, an, there's nothing that I really dislike, but someone actually sent me... I used to I used to write under a different name. When I first started writing, when I was like 14, 15, I had a different name. I'm not going to say what it is because I don't want anyone to go and try and find it. But someone someone found someone found a like a who I went to school with found like a folder of all these old tunes that I'd made, which were never like released properly. I think they're on MySpace or whatever. But um, yeah, I heard I heard a few of them and they were pretty pretty bad. Yeah. But I don't look at it in a in a negative way, it's like you, you, everyone, like in anything you do in life, you have to start somewhere. So it was, yeah. Although it sounds bad now, at the time it was like, actually, I'm, I'm really, yeah. I'm really proud of what I made. So, so that means you've never played on a bad party, though. Oh, I played some bad parties, but the thing is, I can't even remember. There was a place in Oxford called, well, I can't remember the name of the bar now. Did some pretty funny parties there, which. But they weren't bad. They were just like, there was no one really there. But it was just mates having a having a laugh and playing tunes. It wasn't really. So yeah, even that they weren't bad. They were still a lot of fun. Do you remember any? You know what? Bad when, part. When I first started DJing and I was trying to make a name for myself, early on, I probably played in some really bad parties with not many people, and I'm very lucky now to be able to play to thousands of people. But back in the day. When I was doing that, I probably played to sometimes 20 people, but for me at the time, I still enjoyed it because I felt like, wow, actually there's some people hearing me mix. So it was still a good party to me. That's the thing, it's all part of a journey. So something you would see as bad now is like, it's not. Like those, so there's an MC called Grimer who actually put something on Instagram yesterday which made so much sense and he was talking to people about how it, the importance of doing room three and room twos and not trying to rush to do the main room. It's like r your room three and room two sets, that's your prep for when mm -hmm. you get a main room slot and then you're ready to go and smash it. Um, so I don't think, yeah, all the kind of what you would think is a bad party actually isn't because it's just a part of your journey and it's really important um, if you're going to maintain it at kind of a higher level, I suppose. Because of the journey, uh, Friction still wants to manage so many things in his life. Find other jobs I can do because I'm not working hard enough and I need more to do. So yeah. Because it's a journey. Yeah, it's a journey. <laughs> What's your plans for tomorrow? Uh, I'm going to fly home and I'm going to have a night in and chill out and watch some TV. And yeah, try and not go out, basically. Try do you watch football or rugby? I watch football, yeah. Okay. But I support Fulham, so... Yeah, yeah, I'll try not to watch football now. <laughs> If you support Fulham, there's no point to watch football. Yeah, I mean, well, no, there's definitely a point, but it, it gets difficult. <laughs> what are you going to do tomorrow? I'll just get on a plane and see what happens, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. You're DJing somewhere tomorrow, that's what yeah, I was going to ask. Get out, yeah. What yeah. Are you what are you gonna do? Where are you going to DJ no, tomorrow? We, we've got tomorrow off and then... Um, I can't remember what the plan is. I'm in the studio a week and then... Back again next week, back out on the road. So, yeah, tomorrow night will be good. Okay, thank you very much, guys. I appreciate that you stayed so long and uh, you, uh, you answered to my strange question. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Cheers. Bye. Pleasure.